Azuken is probably the best anime released this year, and no, you don't need to check my any list to see how many anime from this year I've actually finished. My favorite part about Azuken is the way that it depicts the cycle of creation and the joy that comes after. Azuken displays the emotion of finishing a creation beautifully by allowing the audience to see their work and the characters' reactions after it's done. Seeing the trio's reactions as they premiere their final project at home for the first time is… perfect. Asakusa is simply sitting on the couch, wrapped in her blanket, cuddling her bunny, completely content with everything going on around her. She is in total bliss. Mizusaki is discussing, with Kanamori, the reception their short got, and you can tell by the emotion in her voice that she is beyond ecstatic. Once the short's over, Kanamori seems to have a gleam in her eye, and Mizusaki is oddly relaxed, almost as if she realizes that, at least for now, her work is done. Even with Asakusa asleep on the couch, it's fairly clear what she thinks about what they created, and before the episode ends, she voices exactly how she feels. <laughs> And this leads back to the beginning of the creation cycle. Throughout the entire series, Asakusa is shown to struggle with coming up with new ideas for their next project. It seems she is unable to do it unless inspiration hits her, and she strikes while the iron's hot. This is how it can be for many people, and seems to be where most of the best ideas come from. In my personal experience, it's very hard for me to write one of these scripts or conceptualize a video if I have no inspiration. Hell, one of the greatest minds of our generation was literally hit on the head when he came up with his greatest creation. Time machine. I haven't invented any time machine. Now, Asakusa is not the only one to have issues when it comes to the creation process. Each member of the main cast has their own struggles that they have to deal with throughout the run of the show. Now, this is not unusual for a show, that's generally what makes it worth watching but Azekin is able to use its main cast to mirror a single creator and to show all the hangups that they might have throughout their creation process. Asakusa is the creative spark, the light bulb that shines when you get your next big idea. She's the mastermind behind every part of the creation process, and nothing can start without her. This is what causes problems though, as she is the kink in the hose that's stopping any work from getting sent along the rest of the line. However, not everything is bad, because when a problem needs to be fixed, like at the beginning of episode 12, she is the one who is able to rewrite the script and make a story that works with the new music. Without her creativity, the short wouldn't have been released, and the girls would have lost a lot of money. But arguably more important, the girls could have lost their spirit. Mizusaki is the perfectionist, and the one doing the final back-end work. Everything must be done by her, and it must be done a certain way, no matter the limitations they're facing. She will make sure it's done on time though, at least that's what she claims. See, she's the reason that things never get finished, and the deadline becomes extremely tight due to finishing it barely within the time frame. If she had her way, every frame would be perfectly drawn and there would not be a single flaw in the project they're working on. Of course, that's just not possible. No matter how much work and refinement you put into something, it will never be perfect. However, she's the one with the discerning eye to see the imperfections and is willing to put in the work to fix them. There's a standard of quality that she refuses to dip below and will put in her all to get there. Kanamori is the realist of the group. She is the one who is away from the actual creation process and can look at everything through a critical lens. She knows that they have deadlines to meet and a budget they can't overspend. She keeps the other two contained by pushing Asakusa to work on the story when it seems she's lazing about and keeps Mizusaki in check by negotiating with her on which cuts she can and can't work on more. She's also the only one really thinking about the future. She's always looking for partners for the next project and any new members, like Domiki, that would be an asset to the team and allow the others to focus on what they're good at. She also keeps them out of trouble by protecting them from the student council and other adults who are trying to shut them down. Like the others, she's not perfect. She can be overbearing to the other two and demand more out of them than they can handle. She can also be too aggressive when trying to cut deals or when dealing with adults, which can lead to things getting out of hand. Aside from just representing a piece of a creator, each girl also represents a step in the creative process. Asakusa is conceptualization, Mizusaki is production, and Kanamori is finalizing. 
But just like the creative process, these roles are not clear cut and often overlap with each other, which allows them to help each other out when the need arises. Each step of the creative process, from conception to finalizing, are all equal once the piece is released. That's when everyone can breathe a sigh of relief and be proud of what they've made. This is where the joy comes in. The joy of creating. Looking back on what you made is extremely gratifying. It's something no one can take away from you, and you can look back and say, I did that. But, of course, this feeling is fleeting. You'll find things about your work that you could have done better, or things that didn't quite go as planned, and you're gonna start nitpicking things in your work that really don't matter in the big picture. This is where you'll have to make an important decision. Will you embrace your inner Mizusaki and continue to work on that singular piece until it's perfect? Or will you take the film club's route and get something as good as you can, release it, and move on to the next thing? But here's the problem. <laughs> There's four members to the film club. And as much as I'd love to ign ignore Domiki in the creation process, she is arguably the most dangerous aspect of it. No, Domiki is not laziness, don't get it twisted. Domiki is procrastination, and there's a key difference there. For me, procrastination rears its ugly head in the middle of the process when I least expect it to. It puts me off from doing work and puts me in a semi-depressive state because I'm unable to work on the thing I'm trying to make. But that doesn't mean that procrastination is fully evil. Some good can come from it too, and we can see that good in Domiki. It's important to note that she is still wanted in the club. Her knowledge of audio and her vast collection are assets the film club can use to better their own projects. But that's not Domiki's goal. All she wants to do is collect audio samples and listen to them, and I can relate. I have a decent collection of things from manga, comics, anime, movies, toku, what have you, and often these things can keep me from my work. I'd rather sit down and binge all 22 episodes of Ultraman X than sit down and write a script. Now I know by saying this I might be giving myself a bit of an incentive to keep putting things off, but my time's not fully wasted. I've broadened my experience in media, and I now have more references I can pull from. However, it's a different story when I watch the same YouTube video again for the 15th time. If I'm being honest, I'm not really sure how Azekin can help me deal with this procrastination issue that I have, but I'm very glad that it was pointed out to me in the way that it was. It might have taken me a few months to reach this conclusion. I wrote almost this entire script pre-quarantine, but now that I have, I can work on it and work to become a better creator. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it, go ahead and leave a like down below and subscribe to see more content because that's going to be coming soon. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, go ahead and go over there. And I'm also going to start live streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv. I'll put it on screen. I don't remember the actual URL. Um, that should be every Monday and Thursday, so it should be a lot of fun. So come join. And uh, with that... I'll see you in the next one.